well now. Not exactly different, but yeah, different. Let's see how this turned out. So this right here should give away what this is. So Gibson has recently, in the last few years, opened their mod shop slash mod collection guitars. And I believe you could actually order these kind of stuff before then. But Fender also has a mod shop where you can order guitars. Now, this guy is a little bit stuck in here. So I'm going to pause the video and get it out. Then resume. So this is the case it's in, which absolutely TSA latches, all the same stuff you would expect from this. But these guitars can be ordered with certain specs that you would not normally find on production line or maybe even well, not even on anything but custom shop stuff. But they're built on the actual Fender USA production line. And this one is unique because it is a hardtail strap. And this is something that you cannot really buy unless you go somewhere outside of Fender's normal stuff. Also, unlike some Fenders, this particular one is a uh this um this one is strung with 10 gauge strings from the factory and of course it's not but something else is rosewood fretboard as well as rosewood neck something that's a little less common and this one is a looker no real wood grain lottery deal. There's our mod shop deal, but there's that hardtail body in Sherwood Green. Now, I personally love green guitars. Man, that's, that logo is really hard to see, but it is there. We'll get a better look at it. But this one has the Shawbucker pickups in it and I am very interested to see what those sound like and how they play. This one turned out every bit the looker I was hoping it would be and it is gonna be one that I think I might have to I don't think I want to get rid of this guy so what's going on with this one right here oh there it is so anyway got some cool case candy fender mod shop stuff the original build specs for the guitar oh man i do love the way that looks kind of wanted 21 fret but the 22 fret will be just fine got some other case candy stuff in there too i have to check that out in a minute but for the moment put this all back in here to keep it safe and check out so the black perloid was something that I was really interested in rosewood fretboard rosewood neck you really gotta get in and focus on it to be able to see that fender on there it's kind of cool it's a little weird but it's kind of it's just different enough that it really kind of makes it cool like it's subliminal it almost looks like a parts caster until you realize what it actually is so again all rosewood neck with locking fender tuners, which is also something I wanted. Not so much because 
I need it, but because it was a free upgrade. And those can, I can run that kind of stuff on the regular dare. Sherwood green with a rosewood neck though. I think that came out just perfect. I'll be really interested to see what kind of, uh, I'll be interested to see what body this is because it's supposed to be an alder body on a uh, rosewood neck. So I'm intrigued and looking forward to getting this one plugged in. Also, I think I want to take this off just to see what's underneath there. And like I say, see what kind of body this is because deep down inside, I've got a lot of questions. Case candy. So you saw the other stuff, but here's the start.fender.com pamphlet with all the different like warranty information and everything. And uh, pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Little bag's pretty cool. But you get a mod shop certificate. So it's like something saying, hey, this guitar was perfectly built to this particular order. So that's pretty neat. Then on top of that, there is your usual things like the uh, uh, little tool. There's some cool looking like strap locks or something on here. I'm not really sure what to do with that uh, other than look on there and think that's pretty. You know, I might have to figure out how to use those. Never seen those before. And the little fender sticker. So overall, an exorbitant amount of case candy, but at the same point in time, pretty neat though. Pretty stuff. So this is what it looks like with it pulled back. And I'm going to put some conditioner on this fretboard because it is looking very, very dry. Frets could look good, feel good, give them a wipe down, but overall it's gonna be that fretboard that needs the conditioning. So I decided to do something a little bit different. I went ahead and uh, condition the fretboard, but I also condition the headstock and look at the difference between before and after of this. I mean, this is a completely different looking headstock when it's been moisturized. And it's, this is soaking in really well, so I am going to probably have to put a second layer of conditioner on there. That neck was really dry. But that headstock, wow, that came out so much better. Now, this is kind of satisfying. This is always kind of satisfying. Pulling the plastic off of brand new pickups. Hmm. If you've never ordered a guitar straight from a manufacturer or picked up one that's never been opened before, like buy, buying from Sweetwater and places like that, you get stuff that's already been opened up. This is incredibly satisfying for looking. And look at how shiny that came out. Mm. That's beautiful. Time to take this pick guard off. So, moment of truth here. Can I get this off without removing the neck? No, not really. But there's a look inside there. Hmm. Actually, I was able to get it off, but inside body American Strat Hardtail SHG SB Pure PNT. No clue what that means. Anybody that knows, let me know. Pickups on the back. Just say fender. No stickers or anything. But they are supposed to be the shawl buckets. They say 48 on them. So, leads are really short though, so I'm not going to try to take anything further out. So now I'm really curious about what the outputs are. So, 
uh, in uh, what we call position 5 or neck 6.99 Middle single coil is 6.06, .06. and then the bridge is 7.23. Uh, just for fun, in the middle 2.28 and 2.24. So these are really low compared to like a lot of the pickups that I see in the Gibsons. I mean, this is these are really low output, and I'm I'm curious as to whether or not we'll see what that's going to mean on the thing, but 7.23, that's on par with like a low output. I mean, I think that's below the 490 series, so I'm not really sure. Like I say, it's going to be interesting to hear what these sound like in, in the guitar, so craziness. Here I go. All right, on to the next part. So, confirming what I thought these pickups are not very hot and not very loud I want to do something real quick this is this is the shawl buckers in the mod shop strat <laughs> That was the bridge, which is the hottest of the three. Middle. And then neck. So, now, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to pick up the Adam Jones Les Paul, which admittedly has hot pickups, but not significantly hotter than these. All right, like the DC high gain is very much hotter, but the uh, burst bucker that's in the neck is going to be different. Like I say, hang on for a second. All right, so I didn't change anything on the amp. I'm just changing to the Adam Jones Les Paul Burst Bucker with a DC high gain. Now, DC high gain is not for not a fair comparison, so I'm just going to play on the front pickup. incredibly different so much so that you would definitely need more amplifier tone volume you know something to bring up the strap now I don't mind that but it is something worth noting that the Shaw Buckers are a significantly lower output than even like a Burst Bucker from the Gibson line. So, because of that though, I don't feel like jacking with the exact settings that I have set up for the pedal board and the um, and the actual amp for the. Uh, for the Les Pauls, so I am actually utilizing the uh, vintage stack on the Twin Reverb. So we are going to be playing today through what would normally be the front side instead of the basement side of the Fender Twin Reverb. And because of that, you get a much higher output, even at just one notch higher volume. <laughs> So 
So this guitar, the neck is really easy to play on. And fenders have always been there. You know, fenders were made to be modified. Leo Fender wasn't a player, he was an engineer. And these guitars... <laughs> That's on the neck. The bridge Did the amp just, oh, no, it's the, it's the output jack. investigate that one later on, but... So, everything on this guitar just sounds pretty good. That's not the actual cable. That's the actual output jack. So this guitar has a really comfortable neck and I don't know how to describe it other than it's like a, it's like in between a fifties C and you know, the, the deep fifties and the sixties early slim taper. Like the, it doesn't, it's got a really cool feel to it and it's really cool to see there's no actual defining difference between the top and the bottom parts. So it's an all rosewood neck. The whole thing doesn't have a second piece or anything. It's just, it's just rosewood. And there's some really nice tones, but more than that, throw some fuzz on it and it Also, this channel. This channel tends to be a little louder than the basement. I'm not really sure why, but overall, the clean tones are just fabulous, man. associate with a fender strap 
And when you mix it with the neck, even at a diminished output, it's pretty impressive. The bridge and the bridge and middle. bridge though by itself Turn that bridge down to like five. So all in all, Mod Shop Stratocaster, Rosewood Neck, um, really feel like they missed the opportunity to put a silver Fender logo on here. Like, it just, it's subliminal, but it's cool, but also, since it's my Mod Shop Stratocaster, I think I'm going to probably put some metallic silver paint on that sometime in the future because or maybe just put a, some vinyl some cut vinyl or something on there because i kind of want it to be less parts caster looking and more fender looking that's got a lot of telecaster sound to it that's with tone rolled down to five, bridge, and um, sawbucker. So that's got a lot of Telecaster sound to the bridge. That's, I don't know, I'm gonna have fun with this guitar. And I hope that, uh, Everybody else gets to, enjoys hearing it, and um, like I say, I'll probably put it up against a couple of the other Stratocasters, uh, the HM Strat and the American Pro, uh, Pro, American Pro Limited. Is that what it is? It's the one with the ebony fretboard, anyway. So, but this one has 10 gauge strings, supposedly. Feels kind of like 10 gauge strings. So, um, like I say, might be time to test out the Shaw Buckers versus um, American Pro Limited. Till next time.